What is up my ninjas? I am Strident and welcome to my review of the SH Figure Arts Doctor Strange Burning Flame set um, by Bandai. Now you know me, I am SH Figure Arts till I die. I think they're the best straight up, the best figure line. Sometimes they're not always, you know, well, sometimes they're not always. Sometimes they're not a thousand percent on point, but when they're on, they're so on that it hurts. Um, and even when they're off, you still get a better figure than what you get from other lines. Now, I chose this version over the Legends version because better articulation, better sculpt, more stuff in the package. And for some reason, these two figures go for about the same price, which makes no fucking sense whatsoever. And I mean, like, look at them. I mean, what is up with that? Why do fans have a problem differentiating high quality, higher end from basic low quality for, I shouldn't say low, but like middle of the road quality for your average, you know, boy or girl. So uh, anyway, we're gonna go into the good, the bad and the ugly about this. And I'm gonna get some things out of the way right off the bat when I start out this sculpt and paint area. I have my problems, issues and nitpicks right up front. Now, I have one thing one thing on this whole figure that sucks first off i'm going to talk about or at least i'm going to mention there's not really that big of a difference between the infinity war version and this version so i stuck with this version it ended up being cheaper in the long run and i'm getting the same level of quality and i got more stuff in the package but the cape i absolutely fucking despise plastic capes i don't like hard rubber capes i don't like hard plastic capes with joints that separate in the middle you know from the sides and the middle i hate that shit i think it's not cool it rarely ever looks good in pictures unless you really really hide the cape in your images and most of the time it's really hard to do that granted the sculpt is good the paint is good the nice uh airbrushing is good but it's a hard cape it doesn't flow in the wind you know, ever since I was a kid collecting superpowers figures and the Toy Biz superheroes figures, DC superheroes figures, you know, Batman, Superman, uh, etc. They had capes. I would make them do something awesome and then let the wind blow. I'd turn the fan on them or I'd blow on their capes to make them look super awesome after they did something heroic. This does not actually give that impression. And I understand there's a lot of people who have never actually played with their figures. Unfortunately, I am not one of those people and these kind of capes always go in the garbage or go in my box of stuff. Um, I have a box full of these hard capes and if anyone wants a bunch of these hard capes from Saitama, um, Injustice Superman, Batman, and uh, from this, let me know. I will send these to you. I don't even care if you don't want to trade something. Just let me know because these are shit. But what I did was, for the sake of the review and the dynamics I needed, I just put a piece of red cloth, cut it in a semi-cape uh, fashion, which is like a almost a half circle. And then it gets, you know, like you cut a chunk out of a half circle. And I just tucked it underneath this cape, which is pretty much what all the custom capes that you can buy on eBay for the Figuarts Doctor Strange. This is what they do. So um, we're going to be looking at this figure with this cape as opposed to the uh cape that it comes in the package with now understand though that a lot of people a lot of collectors that are into figure arts we're gonna go for a custom cloth cape probably a wired cape and i did that too and i will get into that much later after we've gone over all the details of this figure so let's jump into what's good and what's going on with this guy so you see this figure from head to toe dope sculpt dope paint the the likeness is there though from certain angles he looks less like benedict cumber cumberbatch wow cumber benadryl cumber anyway um i'm sorry i know how to say his name it's Bene, benedict cumberbatch um the cape though it only covers you know the back end which kind of the belt looks the same and you see the little connection piece but, you know, as long as you tuck that cape up in there the right way, you'll have a dope-looking design. You don't really have to do too much, although there are much better capes than what I, this custom, you know, quick makeshift version. But, as you see, he is full of detail from top to bottom. We're going to get up close on those details. Here's the face. 
and the face looks good. The stippling technique is in full effect, but all the details are there, and I don't have any issues with how those details are rendered. Probably the only gripe or the only thing I would have done differently is I would have made his mustache and beard more uh, uh, intense, so it feels like it's full, you know, it's actual hair and not stubble. But the Agamotto closed is on his chest, which looks dope. Um, the wrinkles on his tunic are awesome. They look exactly like you saw in the film. The two different uh, patterns and textures of his clothing are there with the parts on the trim and the body of the clothing itself, the tunic itself. The tassels have the little frizzed part you know at the end the shredded part and then the braids going all the way through it and then the leather parts of his belt the metallic parts that are parts of the little buckles and such the wraps around his arms i mean they could probably be painted a little bit better but they're still good it's not outside of the lines um the cloak of levitation is beautiful look at all these little details going throughout it it's like man and on the seams and edges there's lots of detail. There's lots of texturing going throughout the collar and the top portion of the cape. I mean, it's top-notch stuff here. You know, I watched a couple reviews and people were underwhelmed by this figure and somewhat underwhelmed by the film itself. And I don't understand how that's possible with all the insanity going on in it. But I mean, on the figure, look at the difference in texture from the blue parts to the black parts. There's leather and then there's like this burlap uh, uh, you know, heavy, thick material going on there. The belt itself looks beautiful. The different browns and blacks and grays, and then the silvers on the buckles and the metallic parts. It's just perfect. Um, the shoelaces. I meant to say that earlier, but the shoelaces and the wraps, there's a definite difference between the two, and they look good. Even the holes in the boots. I mean, uh, awesome stuff. Accessories. Doctor Strange comes with a decent helping of accessories from flame effects to his magic casting effects, uh, including the uh, Eye of Agamotto, AKA the Time Stone. It's just ridiculous. And he's got all his mystical gang sign fingers, which is awesome. Um, like I said, Time Stone. Uh, you can see the effect that he would, you know, you'd see him turn that, that dial essentially. So he could turn back time literally with the Eye of Agamotto it's dope and it works well and i'm going to show you how to put these mandala effects on the figure it's real simple there's two ways to do it even though certain ways are more accurate to the film than others here are all his different fingers including his mystical gang sign fingers um and they did a great job even the fact that the very bottom of the wrist area still has wraps on it so that it transitions better from the hand to the joint to the wraps on his uh, wrists um these hands here i wanted to show you the pegs those pegs are where you put the mandalas on and mostly that works for the time effect the time gem effect um the flame effects are pretty nice too and those are big and they go all over the place and i'm going to show you a good use for them towards the end of the video right now i just uh, wanted to give you a close-up on them so that you understand what they look like and kind of how they work and how they look and uh, this is the second head sculpt where he looks a little bit more, I want to say he's like angry, you know, his teeth are showing a little bit, his brow is furrowed, and uh, I'm going to get up more on that later on. But let me show you some of these accessories in action. Here he is with the uh, attack and protection mandalas on, and they look beautiful, you know what I mean? They look beautiful, and they don't even look like they're attached to the figure. That's what I love about these things. It's very deceptive how they manage to get all that going on. And if you're, you know, a whiz with Photoshop, you can find ways to make this glow a little bit or whatever your video editing, your uh, f uh, photo editing software of choice might be. But I love them. They look good. And like I said, if you have a cape that's made of cloth, you get dynamism, you know, because the cape will move out of the way depending on what the arms and upper body are doing. If you have that heavy cape, it's always going to be like overly starched and it won't look right and you don't need such a stiff look to such a dynamic character the whole point of the character being dynamic is that the elements that make up the look of this character work together to create that dynamism you know what i mean you don't want to have like he couldn't be doing kicks if he's wearing a tunic that doesn't spread apart to allow for his legs to move you know that would cut down on how dynamic he could be and they masterfully engineered this i think it's two parts could be three because it's the belt 
the upper part of the jacket and then the under portion. And uh, a lot of people have had that on backwards or tilted to the side so he couldn't move his legs right. And as you can see in my pictures, he is capable of moving just fine. Here he is with two um, time stone, the two time stone effects in action. And they, they look awesome. Could you imagine that? I wonder what would the what would be the, the, the explanation? You know, what would happen if he could use that times two? You know, how would he be, you know, controlling time faster? Would he be uh, controlling? Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just, it, it kind of boggles my mind what he could do. And it's also why I complained about the lack of action, of imaginative action in Infinity War. Because if you watch Doctor Strange alone, he was doing crazy shit with his powers. But anyway, here's a standard face. I showed you this earlier. Here it is up close, stippling in full effect. And it looks good, even up close. It doesn't look terrible. I mean, granted, a lot of the details aren't as sharp as what we get on typical Marvel Legends or Black Series or, you know, WWE figures. Here's the angry face. Same deal. Stippling in a full effect. You get the, the texture of the skin and all that. But the eyes look good. The mustache and beard look pretty good. Um, the hair is, is meh. You know, it's not terrible. But the gray on the side could be you know, a little bit neater. You can kind of see where the, uh, you know, I guess the brown, tra it doesn't really transition, or maybe it does, kind of. But, you know, it's not even on both sides. But Angry Face is good. It's very subtle. At first, you don't even notice that he's actually just angry. It kind of feels like it's the same head as the first one until you start moving it around and you see his teeth and you see how much his brow is furrowed. But it's all good stuff, good bunch of accessories. So let's compare now. A lot of people would want to see how he scales with other characters, and he's a little bit on the short side. I don't think he's out of scale, per se. I just look at it as he's shorter. Um, I put him with the uh, Bleeding Edge Iron Man because that's the closest to what the Mark 50 would be in the comics. Um, Star Lord, of course, was there in the, um, you know, in the in the film. So I put him here as your uh, another comparison. And Spider Man also was there. I do not have the Iron Spider, even though I kind of like that the movie version of Iron Spider better than the comic book version. I still haven't picked it up yet. Um, Drax, this is the first Drax from the first Guardians of the Galaxy wave, which I feel is just as good and because his mouth is closed he's superior to the other one because you need stoic expression for stoic characters um and then you have dr strange of course um i think his articulation i mean his uh i'm sorry height is fine a lot of people will uh complain about him being shorter because he should be six inches because benedict cumberbatch is six feet tall but you know i don't mind variation in height when it's this close so not a problem there articulation so his articulation is pretty uh straightforward his arms move up about this much nothing even with that the stuff on his shoulders is getting in the way he can bend uh you know more than 90 degrees at the elbow it's almost like a double joint you know this this is how figure arts work unless they're heavily armored or have big biceps so uh you know i have no issues there he's got uh bicep swivel which was strange to me because they've been doing the anatomical uh, bicep swivel or you know swivels in the in the arm ever since the early marvel figures and stuff they did it on most of the dc figures but they didn't do it here but he also has this butterfly joint which has a nice patterning to it so it kind of mimics what the shoulder of the uh tunic would look like because i assume it's like one shirt and another shirt wrapped over it but uh it, it adds for more range so you can kind of cock his arms back and have him like lunging and it looks more dynamic um his uh butterfly joint works really well to get his arm over the shoulder so if you need him to cross his arms to do some of his uh mystical uh you know his mystical gang signs and shit he can do it uh like i said bicep swivel works perfectly nothing is in the way uh torso his torso moves perfectly, and I know I skipped the head and neck, but it's a double ball, jo ball joint. You have one at the base of the neck and one at the base of the head, 
and when the neck finishes moving, then you have all the range of motion in the head. But uh, he moves back that far. Um, or I'm sorry, that's standing up straight. This is moving all the way back. It's a pretty decent amount of, of range, you know, moving backwards. I thought it was going to be hindered by the belt, but nope. But if you move it all the way back, you get this gap. So I would be careful if that kind of thing bothers you and just not do that. The belt itself is a floating belt. So depending on how you pose him, the belt can move. This is where it should be or close to the side of one leg or the other. If you uh, feel like making him kick, you can always move it out of the way. It floats and it moves, and you know you often will see it moving more to the right or to the left, depending on what side you favor in the kind of poses that you choose to put Doctor Strange in. That's smart, because it, it moves things out of the way. The tunic, the lower part is the same way, as you can see. Um, his kicks, he can kick up about this high straight out. He has the drop-down joint in the hip. It's hard to see with all the extra cloth that's in the way, but he does kick up pretty high. And that's with, the first one was without it, this one is with the drop down joint activated. Knees are double jointed, well, they're over 90 degrees. So it kind of gives you the double jointed feel. Here it doesn't really look like it, but um, when you pose him you can see he's got a swivel at the thigh. It's kind of nice because uh, it's hidden underneath all of the tunic parts. Um, once again, double jointed knee. Well, over 90 degrees. It's not double jointed. I don't know why I keep saying that, but it gives you the impression of the double joint. Um, his kicking range is pretty high. That's kicking all the way back. And uh, it's cool too if you need more. You can turn him sideways and, you know, the tunic gives the impression, it gives you room to move his legs up further. And then that's his sidekick to give you an impression of how high up he can kick. Feet, his feet are on ball joints. He points down that much. So when he's flying, floating, levitating, whatever, you got that much. Uh, you can pull the feet up this much. So if he's like climbing steps or a mountain, he's on an incline of some sort, you can get that much in the upward position. And you've got a toe bend, which is pretty nice. Um, one of the cool things about the ball joints, and it's kind of a gift and a curse, and I imagine the longer I have them, you can kind of work it out. But that's as far as you can get his legs apart and keep his feet flat on the ground. You have to be careful with that kind of stuff. But I think it works. It, it doesn't look bad. He never looks like old action figures, you know, where they didn't have the joints to support the poses that you put them in. Instead... He has those joints, so you can actually get him in the proper poses, and I like that. Um, all in all, I mean, I, I, I don't really feel like his articulation is limited. And I've seen reviews where people said it was limited, but I mean, you see what I'm doing here. There's no tricks involved. This is literally the same figure from multiple positions doing the things that I envisioned and that we saw Doctor Strange do in both his film and in Infinity War. So I'm pretty cool with his posability and I have no issues to report when it comes to articulation. So here's something new, alternative display options. So I've explained how much the cape sucks. So you wanna fix that, step one, take the, take the cape off. Take the fire effects and burn that cape with all the other hard plastic capes that you're gonna need to replace in order to make your figures look super heroic. I would have initially said buy custom capes from me, but I so far have done Batman and Superman, and maybe you need a Doctor Strange cape. You need to get online and find a seller that makes this beautiful cape right here. This is the cloak of levitation, the full-on cloak of levitation, and this thing is dope. It's wired and it's made to fit underneath the uh, upper portion of the cloak itself and it replaces this piece of garbage that is that hard plastic cape that comes with him now if you dig that you know what i'm saying that's that's your thing but we all know that's not what the cape looked like in the film um granted that this figure's cape is a lot uh the the the, the, the cloth cape is a lot brighter it still looks the part when you have it combined with the character, you know? And depending on the lighting of your image, it'll work even better. So 
if we're trying to go for, you know, a little bit more accuracy and make him look the part, then, you know, the Cloak of Levitation deserves more attention. It is a character, you know, in and unto itself. So why not get in there and get something with more detail? I mean, it has a shit ton of detail. I mean, look at this. It's pretty amazing that they were able to pull this off. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, they just shrunk down a pattern that was made from actually looking at it, you know, from the film, looking at reference from the film. But, I mean, look at that. The inside of the sculpted cape didn't have painted detail to that degree. Now, considering what we pay for the figure, this should have been a non, you know, a non-issue, a no-brainer. Now, I do have an issue with this kind of a cape. It's very satiny and very uh, soft. And it feels like over time, if you play with him a lot, you know, if you don't buy two, you're going to run into the issue of this satin stuff catching on anything. You know, you have a uh, hangnail, forget about it. You got uh, um, a little, you know, cut on your hand that, that dried, you know, the wrong way, forget about it. You're going to have to deal with little pieces of this, little parts of it catching on that, you know, cut on that hangnail if you play with him and he falls on the ground and there's a piece of wood or linoleum that's up he's going to catch on it whatever if there's a god forbid there's a nail you know you're gonna be screwed but if you take better care of your stuff then you won't have to worry about this you know you get a good you know cloak of levitation that feels like a character and that's what this is all about there are two ways that you can you know put this cape on you know, attach the cape. You can do like I did here and just put it over the shoulders of the figure, cloak and all, upper portion of the cloak and all. But what sucks about that is that you'll still have the lower portions of the cloak where it connects to his costume showing. You could go to great lengths to try to cover it, but this particular version does not dip far enough to cover those things. So you would probably be better off with the intended method of uh, attaching this cape which is tucking the cape under the upper portion of the cloak that's attached to the figure and i think that looks just as good especially if you have them in action you fold it back over those parts which you'll see in the next couple pictures i uh well not this one you'll see it in a second when he's like throwing the cape the, the cloak back um like this and it feels more like when it's in action it feels more like you know, it's part of the figure and less like an add-on. But this thing looks amazing. I mean, the amount of detail, and granted, it's just literally two graphics on uh, cloth that have been, you know, kind of stitched together. But it looks great. And the wire is really good stuff. It holds really well. It's not like what we got with the Figuarts Arts uh, Justice League Batman. So, um, yeah, I think this is worth looking into if you really want to take this figure to the next level. The bottom line, I think you can already tell where I'm going with this. Sculpt is awesome. Uh, the uh, accessory count is fucking phenomenal. Um, the articulation, of course, it's figure arts, you know. And I say that even though people will be able to point out figure arts that do not have the perfect range of motion, it all depends on who your fig your, the figure is that we're talking about. And it seems like a lot of times... They nail it with the right figures. Doctor Strange does Kung Fu. He can do Kung Fu poses. He can do Kung Fu kicks. He can do punches, etc., etc. But he needs to have freedom with his upper body, with his hands, you know, and his arms. And he has that. So you can get him to do all the little crazy, you know, Kung Fu-ish, mystical gang sign type stuff that he does, you know. And it looks good. Also, if you have him as the Doctor Strange to go with your uh, MCU Marvel Legends setup, he fits. It, it's fine because the movie figures have the detail to match this figure. So I'm cool with him. Uh, I don't have any issues with him. I'm still in the process of getting my uh, MCU collection, my Marvel Legends MCU collection up to snuff or my Marvel Legends, I'm sorry, my MCU action figure collection up to snuff. So I have a lot of guys to still pick up. I shouldn't say a lot. I have a, quite a few. I just found some, and uh, you'll be seeing reviews of them. I'm going to put something up on a, uh, Facebook so that you guys can get an idea of what's going on with the state of all that and the reviews to come. But I am impressed with this figure. Um, 
I got mine for about uh, 60 bucks altogether shipped. So, um, and then the cape was 22 bucks, something like that shipped. So, you know, you're going to spend 80 bucks altogether, but you know, get the cape now, then, you know, go ahead and get the figure later. You won't be sorry. So this has been my look at the SH Figure Arts Doctor Strange Burning Flame uh, set by Bandai. Uh, this is this is an uh, uh, I don't know, I want to say A plus plus. You know I won't say S class, but an A plus plus. It becomes an S class figure once you attach this custom cape. Now there are so many different sellers that do these capes, so be careful. Make sure you get the right one. For the right figure if you have the marvel legends there's one for that if you have the figure arts there's one for that but uh this figure's dope you need to get him so that you can have him jump in on the battle against thanos and uh i mean that's my story and i'm sticking to it so uh i've got a lot more good stuff to come so stay tuned those of you who have been here for a while patiently awaiting these videos uh thank you for doing that too um i'm glad you're here you're the reason why i'm doing this in the first place and that's it for me. Peace outside. Thank you for watching my video. Um, if you enjoyed what you saw, please give it a like, a share, let your friends know. Um, check me out on social media. All the links are in the description. And if you really want to help me out big time, jump on Patreon and support the channel. Every little bit helps. The smallest amount to the largest amount.